Good morning, a good afternoon. Good afternoon, it's lunch with Gina. Why would I say good morning? Um, but we happen to be on spring break, uh, Rise Network, so please forgive me. Some of our schools are on spring break, some are not. We um, today are meeting with Alex Wheelahan, who is the Director of Admissions and Marketing for the Eastwoods School, which is in Oyster Bay, Long Island, and it is a co-ed um, pre-nursery through eighth grade school. And they happen to still be in session some of our um, member schools don't go on uh, spring break until April, but we have Alex here to sit with us and talk about um, the admission cycle, where we are right now, and beyond admissions and what that means for our families. So again, we want to congratulate those families who have just received um, acceptance into independent schools, and we also want to encourage those families who are still on the wait list to, you know, be patient, um, but at the same time, be active in acknowledging that you do want a placement in um, your particular school. And those, for those families who did not get accepted, we want to help you reassess and um, be encouraged to apply again. So without further ado, Alex, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Gina. This is great. Awesome. So we, we are really thrilled that you all are a part of our member school of networks of member schools and we, we're happy to have you. Why don't you tell uh, our audience a little bit about Eastwood School? Sure. Well, we're um, here on 46 acres in Oyster Bay. As you said, we're pre-nursery that's two years old as of December 1st. So they're a little bit younger than two, some of them when they come in through eighth grade. And um, we recently spoke to a lot of our parents here and asked them, when they think about Eastwoods, what do they think of? And they said, they think of it as their home. They think of this as a place where children are really writing their own story because there's so many opportunities. And they talked a lot about children, their own children who came in and experienced being on the stage for the first time and how they saw them grow as public speakers and really came out of themselves in a way they never could have imagined before. And that's something we're so proud of here at Eastwoods. Great. Uh, admission cycle for you. Where are you all at with admissions? Um, sure. Well, it's funny because as, as you know, I have my background in New York City admissions where the cycle has just come to an end. But here on Long Island, it's really starting to begin. We um, have rolling admission and we see the trend is that most of the applications come in spring, but we do see people all the way through the summer. Great. So um, where are you at um, with rolling admissions? Where are you at in the process? How does that process really look? Because I think families are a little confused about rolling admissions. You will still accept applications right now, correct? Yes, absolutely. This is, this is our season. So we're seeing the bulk of our applications right now. And as long as there's room in a class, we'll see um, applicants until that class is full. So it is really a different process than people are used to if they're looking at Isagni schools in New York City. And where are your families coming from? Where do they travel from to get to Eastwoods? Sure. We have kids from 25 different school districts here at Eastwoods. The bulk of the children do come from the surrounding areas. We get busing. Um, if you live on Long Island and you live within 15 miles of Eastwoods, you should get busing through your local school district. That is your right as a taxpayer. So. Um, we see children all through that radius of 15 miles around Eastwoods. And sometimes we have students who come from even further away. We've had a student who came from Southampton. We have a family from Amityville. So there's certainly people who travel to come over here. Mm -hmm. uh, if we had a newly accepted family in this conversation with us, having lunch with us, what, would you, what advice would you give them? They just found out that they got accepted. They're really excited. Um, they've already signed the contract, wrote that check. What, what advice would you give them? What could they be doing between now and the fall in preparation for enrollment? One of the things we try to do with all of our families is set them up with a buddy family so that they can get to know the school um, parent to parent. You get to know what events are important to go to, what to expect of time um, that you can volunteer at school, how you can get involved, and for the kids too, so that they can make friends, have some play dates over the summer. We do prepare summer packets of work too for students that are given out. And we of course encourage all parents to come in and you know they can meet with me again, meet with the head of school, meet with division heads, and students often will wanna come back one more time for a visit and they of course welcome to do that too. 
We have a great spring fair too at the, in the end of May and a lot of our new students will come to that as well as a way to introduce themselves to the Eastwoods community. So being a part of the community even before you actually enroll is, is, is really important, right? Making Absolutely. We're small here and um, we always say it's not just every teacher who knows every student here. Every parent and every student knows every student here. So uh, my children just had their birthday parties over the weekend and they're in first grade and third grade. And we had students in kindergarten through fifth grade who came to their party because those are their friends. Mm. Yeah, that's the benefit of having a small school community. Everyone knows everyone. So you have mentorship with the older students, with the younger students, and um, certainly an opportunity for um, parents to see what life is going to be like as they move up in the grades, right, and the connections that they need to have. Yes, and there's actually, it's, I was talking to our board chair over the weekend, and for some parents who have questions about school as they move on, we actually pair them up even once they're enrolled with older parents of older children, not necessarily older parents, but parents of older children who can help them through the process or tell them a little bit more about what to expect as the years go on. Because you come to the open house sometimes when your child is four or five years old and when they're eight or nine, you start to have questions again. Sure, sure. Every year is a, is a new experience. I agree. And, and parents, please make sure that you continue to have those open communications with different um, stakeholders in the school community to reassess exactly where, where I am right now in fourth grade, where am I at in fifth grade, what are the expectations and how can I support my children. Uh, so what about those families who did not receive letters of acceptance yet? So you, again, you've worked in New York City schools, you know where a lot of families are right now. Um, and a lot of them are feeling a sort of way about it, right? Um, and what we do on our end is let them know that this is really no true representation of who you are as a family, right? It's about finding that right fit school and finding a school that makes sense for you. Um, how would you help families kind of reassess where they are right now and what their next steps should be moving forward with applying to independent schools? Well, I think, as you said, Gina, in, especially in New York City, when there's so many children applying for so few spots, families need to remember that it's not a reflection on them or their child, that typically there's so many great candidates for each school that they wish they could take more, more of them. Um, if you are on the wait list, be patient, but also make it clear that you're really interested in the school, that you're committed to that school, and um, follow up with details about what you loved about the school, not a generic letter, but really be clear about it. And if you have an early childhood director or an organization you're working with who can advocate for you as well, that goes a long way. Somebody who already has a relationship with the admissions officer. If you are not accepted and would like to be reconsidered for the following year, you should absolutely call the school. You should be kind, <laughs> even if you're upset because that phone call can really make a difference in whether or not you're considered in the applicant pool the next year. I know every once in a while we have a family who will say, not this year or not mid-year, but let's wait until September. And understandably, that's hard to hear. But if you burn your bridges at that point, it makes it tough to reapply. And, you know, of course, we're happy to see you again. And I think all the admissions directors are, but as a family, you start to feel awkward too if you have a tough conversation with an admissions director. So remember, likely they wanted your child. They just couldn't fit your child in their class. And if you call back and remind them that you're a great family with a nice child and you love their school, you should reapply the following year, absolutely. And they may say to you, this will not be a fit. And that's tough to hear, but they're being honest. And ask them, say, what do you think would be a fit then for my child? They may have great advice. I agree. I totally agree with you. Um, so once your admissions cycle is over, and again, you, you're, you're interviewing families through the summer until you fill up a class, your admissions is still open. But once you have that solid class number, what, what is your role um, as director of admissions and marketing thereafter? I, I would assume the cycle just starts right over again, right? I mean, you're always on. Sure, it does. It starts right over again. And I, even in Manhattan where they're done at a certain date in full, it's now welcoming the children. It's um, getting the parents to 
um, meet their buddy families, getting them to the orientation, getting all the materials ready for the following year. So there's um, a lot of work that goes into that. And also people move over the summer. It happens. People move, people change their mind, financial situations change. So spots may open up and admissions directors always have to be on call to find somebody to fill that space. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, want, it, it's, you make such an effort to put together a perfect class. And then when one child can't come, it can be like a house of cards. So you really want to do your best job to find somebody who's going to fit, who's going to thrive in that classroom environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are starting um, all over again ourselves this, this spring with our Rise Parent Power Conference, which is part recruitment, part parent development. So April 29th, if you haven't registered, please do register because we're going to have phenomenal schools. I hope Eastwoods will come yes. and present and be there um, as you continue to fill in with rolling admissions. We have families that come all, all from all over the, the five boroughs of New York City and, you know, Westchester as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about equity and inclusion and diversity. Sure. Oyster Bay, Long Island, not the most diverse of communities, right? So what, what is Eastwood's doing to attract, and I've met many amazing families of color at Eastwood's who are very committed to education, committed to Eastwood's, and are working um, in spite of the lack of diversity that is across all of our independent schools. Mm -hmm. um, they are working to um, be a part of the community and to, to attract other families of color. So let us know uh, some of the things that you're doing in part being a part of, you know, RISE membership is, you know, definitely helping us to learn more about the community so that we can share that with our, with our families who connect with us. But what is Eastwood's doing with regards to equity and inclusion and diversity and making the school um, a community that represents, uh, you know, the New York City area? Sure. Um, it is something we're so committed to, Gina. We're so committed to our diversity work here. We're committed to it in our curricular work. We have a wonderful director of curriculum and instruction who's also the head of our lower school and early childhood. And um, she's really doing great work to make sure that our curriculum represents everyone. And um, we are members of RISE. We also joined Early Steps. Actually, that was one of my first things that I did when I walked in here. And um, we're working not just to diversify our student body, but also when we look at hiring, it's something that we really take into consideration also, that we want to make sure that as the years go on, our staff, our faculty is reflective of all people. So it's interesting, Oyster Bay itself is fairly diverse, but where we are in Oyster Bay, this little section is not so much. So I've also reached out to boys and girls clubs locally. We have nice relationships with local Jack and Jill organizations. So we're trying to do outreach in every way possible to let people know that we're here. We are um, right off of Northern Boulevard. People hear Oyster Bay and think we're all the way down by the water, but we're actually pretty easy to get to and um, a terrific and welcoming community. So we just wanna market that more too. So people know that we're here. We keep getting told we're the best kept secret. We don't want to be a secret anymore. So well, good. Well, we're we're working to make sure that you're not. <laughs> a secret. And I, and and to add to that, um, I know that you all are digging deeper with regards to curriculum and um, making the space more equitable and inclusive. And so there's two things that um, you have. One has already happened, which is you know a school movie going mm -hmm. outing where you all went third grade through eighth grade to go see Hidden Figures. Um, and then you were able to bring that um, curriculum of science and equity and diversity, whether it's gender and race, back into the classroom. Um, so I know that your head of curriculum was, was really excited about that. Um, and how did that outing go? It was terrific. Um, so third grade and up went to go see the movie and the students came back and they loved it. And we got such nice feedback from parents too. They were so excited that all of the kids were getting a chance to see this movie. And, you know, I was mentioning to a friend earlier today that even my first grade son and my daughter who's in pre-K now are dying to see this movie. And isn't that wonderful? Something that, 
you know, as a parent, I might not have been able to sell as much to the little ones. They want to see this movie. They want to see these strong women scientists. They want to learn about diversity and the race struggle in America. And for me as a parent, I, I couldn't be more happy, especially as somebody who grew up in New York City and really worries sometimes about my children growing up in the suburbs of Long Island. Will they have the same experience that I had? Will they have the same exposure? And my hope is that they will and that we'll help create that for them. And you're even going further in supporting that by um, having one of our amazing thought leaders, Lynn Maureen Price, Hurdle Price, come in. She's been around to a lot of our member schools uh, with the whole idea of having fearless conversations, right? So the conversations about equity and inclusion and race and diversity, um, needs to be fearless, right? We need to lean into discomfort. And she's gonna be coming to speak with your faculty members um, this spring. And so we're really excited about that, um, being able to um, just kind of break culture and break barriers to be able to dig deep and say, listen, as a community, this is who we are, this is who we wanna be, and we need to be able to discuss it and how can we be fearless with that. So I'm really excited about Lynn coming to Eastwoods this spring. Thanks, so are we. We can't wait for Lynn to get here. And I know as an administrative team, we um, have been moving faculty meetings around and this is something that is such a huge priority for us. We wanted to get her in before the school year's over to get our faculty thinking. And as we look at more professional development work too, we're thinking about different ways we can use you and your resources and Lynn and anyone else you can introduce us to because we are so committed and we have the ability to do this work, so we should be. Well, thank you. And I'm really excited too, as we are in Women's History Month, um, most of our lunches with Gina's, in fact, all of them, um, all of our interviews have been with powerful, dynamic women who are making a difference in our independent school community. So we want to thank you, Alex, for joining Lunch with Gina today, sharing more about the Eastwood schools, what you all have going on as a school and where you are in your admission cycle. And we're really excited. We're really excited for your community and being able to support more families of color. Thank you, we couldn't be more thrilled. So thank you so much and how flattering to be part of Women's History Month. So thank yes. you for that. That made my day. Thank you, Gina. One another. Okay, well, thank you so much, Alice. We'll be talking with you soon. Um, thank you so much, Rise, for checking in today with Lunch with Gina. Don't forget to register for the sixth annual Rise Parent Power Conference at Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem on April the 29th. Information to register will be right below. Okay, thanks and enjoy spring break, everyone. All right, I'll talk to you soon, Alex. Bye, bye. thanks, Gina. Okay, bye-bye.